what I'm going to look at now is how we can predict how a system of reactants and products, so a system of, if we're looking at this reaction here, hydrogen, oxygen and water, how a system like this changes uh, in order to reach equilibrium. How can we analyze how this kind of system changes? Well, let's say I have, let's say I put, I've got some samples of hydrogen, of oxygen and of water. And I put them all in a box like this. So I've got some hydrogen floating around, I've got some oxygen floating around, and I've got some water floating around. Now there are three possibilities for what can happen when I put my hydrogen, oxygen, and water into a box. The first possibility is that there is a net forward reaction, there is a net production of water, and there is a net reduction in uh, the hydrogen and oxygen in the box. That's the first option. The second option is that there is a net backwards reaction. Uh, if there is a net backwards reaction, it means we've got, uh, we're reducing the amount of water and we're increasing the amount of hydrogen and oxygen. The last option is very unlikely, but it may so happen that the amount of hydrogen, oxygen and water that I put in this, in this container here is exactly right such that the system is already at equilibrium. And if it's already at equilibrium from the start, then there is no net reaction. So we don't get either of these situations, everything just stays the same. So how can we figure out which of these is going to occur? Well, figuring out which of these is going to occur relies on something called the concentration fraction. So the concentration fraction for this uh, reaction is equal to the concentration of H2O squared divided by the concentration of hydrogen. And we square this because uh, hydrogen has a 2 before it in the chemical equation and multiply that by the concentration of oxygen. So that is our concentration fraction. We can figure out this concentration fraction for a system at any time. We can figure out the concentration fraction at the start when I put hydrogen, oxygen and water in the container or we can figure it out uh, at, at another time. If, we, if the system is at equilibrium when we figure it out then this concentration fraction will be equal to the equilibrium constant. It will be equal to K1. However, so that, that, that is if, if the concentration fraction at the start, let's say I'm calculating this concentration fraction at the start. Now, if at the start the concentration fraction is equal to K1, so if concentration fraction is equal to K1, then we're going to see no net reaction occurring. The system is already at equilibrium, so nothing there's, we're not going to see any changes in the amount of any of our reactants and products. Now, there are two other possibilities. The concentration fraction could be greater than the equilibrium constant. Now, if the concentration fraction is greater than the equilibrium constant, then as the system comes to equilibrium, we want, we're going to see in a reduction in the concentration fraction as it comes down to equal K1. Now how can we reduce the concentration fraction? We can reduce the concentration fraction by reducing the concentration of water and increasing the concentration of hydrogen and oxygen. So if the concentration fraction is greater than K1, uh, the co it will decrease as it reaches equilibrium and it'll do that by undergoing a net back reaction by decreasing the amount of product and increasing the amount of reactant. So if the concentration fraction is greater concentration fraction is greater than K1, we're going to see a net forward reaction, pardon, a net backwards reaction, because by if we have a net back reaction, that's that gives us a decrease in the concentration fraction, which is what we need, because at the moment, our concentration fraction is too big. And lastly, the next possibility is, obviously, if the concentration is fraction is less than the equilibrium constant and if this is the case then as the system reaches as the system reaches equilibrium the concentration fraction will increase up to k1 and it'll do that by increasing the concentration of water and decreasing the concentration of hydrogen and oxygen so it'll undergo a net forward reaction so when our concentration fraction is less than k1 our concentration fraction will increase uh, by making uh, as the as the as the reaction undergoes a net forward process, a net forward reaction needs to occur and will occur 
for, in order for the reaction to reach equilibrium. Now, there's another thing to consider when we're looking at uh, shifts in shifts to equilibrium states, and that is the effect of temperature. So it's very important that we realise that temperature is the only thing, nothing else can affect, it can change an equilibrium constant for a reaction. So no matter what, if we have this reaction here, the equilibrium constant is equal to K1. However, there is one thing we can do to change K1. We can change the temperature. So for every reaction, uh, there will be a different equilibrium constant at a different temperature. And so how is temperature change K? Well, it depends on whether a chemical reaction is exothermic or endothermic. If a chemical reaction is exothermic, then if we increase the temperature, if we make things hotter, then the value for our equilibrium constant will decrease. On the other hand, for an endothermic reaction, if we increase the temperature, then the value of our equilibrium constant will also increase. Now, this second one we, makes quite a lot of sense, really. If we're incorrect, we know that endothermic reactions absorb energy. And so if we increase the temperature, then that means we're increasing the energy of all our reactants. And if there's more energy around, then that means there's more energy to allow the endothermic forward reaction to occur. And if there's more forward reaction happening, then the K value will increase. And that, that can then help us explain the exothermic uh, this, this information for exothermic things, exothermic reactions, because the backwards reaction for an exothermic uh, process is in fact itself endothermic. So if there's more energy around by increasing the temperature, then that means there's more energy for the backwards endothermic reaction to occur. And if, the back, if there's more energy for the backwards reaction to occur, if the backwards reaction is occurring to a greater extent, that means we're going to see a lower equilibrium constant based on this uh, this thing here. We know that the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration fraction at equilibrium. So these, this is the way the temperature affects K values. Now we're going to look at an example. So if we leave this information here, just to help us uh, Keep that in mind as we analyze another process. We're going to look at, we're going to do a, an example calculation for how we can use this kind of comparison between the concentration fraction and the equilibrium constant to help us uh, figure out what's going on in a given system of reactants and products. And so the, the example that we're going to look at is the breaking down of this chemical here. to this nitrous nitrogen dioxide, nitrous oxide. And so this is our reaction here. And we, got a, we know a little bit of information about this. We know that change in enthalpy is greater than zero, which we know that the equilibrium constant is equal to 10 when we're dealing with a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And we know a couple of things about the actual substances that we have. We know that the concentration N2O4 is equal to 3.6 mole per litre, and the concentration of nitrous oxide is equal to 7.2 mole. So, what we're going to do, based on this information here, we're going to figure out whether a net forward reaction or a net backwards reaction is occurring. We do that by working out the concentration fraction, and so this is going to be equal to concentration of NO2 squared, because we've got this 2 here, divided by the concentration of N2O4. So that is going to equal 7.2 squared over 3.6, which is also equal to 14.4. So the concentration fraction for this information, given this information here, is 14.4. So that means the concentration fraction is greater than the K value because our K value is only 10. That means that for the concentration fraction to decrease back down to 10, we need to see a net backwards reaction. So at this at this point here, described by uh, these, this data, a net back reaction is occurring. Now, what if 
we changed. So here we've assumed that we are actually dealing with 20 degrees Celsius. We've assumed that in these calcul in this uh, this conclusion here. However, if we heat things up so that we're now at 30 degrees Celsius, can we figure out which way the reaction is occurring? Well, that if uh, if we're at 30 degrees Celsius, that doesn't change our concentration fraction. Our concentration fraction is still 14.4. That's all fine. However, we can no longer be certain that the concentration fraction is greater than K because we have an endothermic reaction uh, given by this here. So this is an endothermic reaction. And we've increased temperature. We can look down here and see that we're going to have an increase in our K value. So our, in our K value is no longer 10. Our K value is now more than 10. Now our K value could still be, so if our K value is more than 10, if it's still less than 14.4, so if our new K value, if the K value at 30 degrees Celsius is still less than 14.4, then that will mean that the, the concentration fraction remains greater than the K value and we'll still see a net backwards reaction. If the K value increases such that at 30 degrees such that it's now greater than 14.4, then our concentration fraction is now less than our K value. And so that's going to give us a net forward reaction. Lastly, our K value may increase to exactly 14.4. It's very unlikely, but it's possible. And that will mean that these two things are equal and there is no net reaction occurring. And it's important to remember that at equilibrium, when there's no net reaction, there is in fact a forward reaction and a back reaction occurring, but they're simply occurring at the same rate, so there's no net reaction. So that's how we can analyse and predict equilibrium shifts by comparing equilibrium constant values and concentration fractions.